It, it took four screws to undo the top of the cabinet, two on each side. So um, let's go ahead. a little bit of damage here on the corner so yeah the CD player must have been hit during transport which doesn't surprise me at all yeah but okay I mean what would you expect such a cheap price right so here it is So it's surprisingly simple. There is one main board with a transformer here for uh, for the power supply. Um, then there is the CD player mechanism right here, and then there's a ribbon cable which goes to the front panel where uh, where all the buttons and the display is located all right so i'm looking at the main board um and i can't see any obvious faults um i can't see anything burnt or destroyed so You know, the, what I'm thinking is that I will probably um, unmount the main board uh, and the, the, the CD player mechanism and the front of the CD player, so the part right here, yeah, so that I have better access to everything. Alright, so I unmounted the, the main board from the cabinet and um, it was surprisingly easy. Uh, actually, just a couple of screws, well, maybe four screws in all. You have to unscrew the uh, transformer of the power supply and then two more screws. Uh, somewhere on the board I forget uh, I think one in the corner there and one in that corner here also you need to disconnect the uh, ribbon cables from the main board by just simply pulling them out you know uh, at first I thought they might be locked uh, somehow into the connectors but no they simply slide in and out. Um, so I did that. So next thing I did, obviously, was to have a, a closer look at the uh, main board itself. Um, the seller said uh, it had uh, secondary power, whatever that may mean. Uh, but it didn't uh, come on yeah it doesn't switch on so there must be uh, in my opinion a fault with the power supply so next thing I thought well let's just have a a little bit a closer look at the power supply and there were indeed a few things that um, let's say alarmed me that something might be wrong um, now you need to be pretty close to to notice what I did but I'll give it a try so let me place the board in such a way that you can follow along with me there at the bottom 
you see the uh, diodes which form the uh, bridge rectifier uh, for the power supply. So I know it's a bit hard to see, but if you look carefully at the legs of the diodes, you'll see that most of them are pretty blackened, you know, and crusty, in fact, like this one here, okay. So, and that's, that's not a very good sign. It would mean that the diodes got pretty hot, so they must have carried quite a bit of current. So, that's, that's not very good. Also, if you take a close look at this capacitor here, you'll see that there, there's what I would qualify as a, a burn mark. Yeah, I mean, if you if I rub over it, you see, uh, there's a the capacitor, the the blue electrolytic. Uh, is blackened so somehow something must have overheated close to it and uh, I don't think it would be a surprise that the diodes here are the culprits but if you look around here right here this thing here looks like a transistor yeah uh, but it is uh, it has a code name let's see its code name is PS202 okay so this little thing right here which looked like a transistor is actually a fuse which is soldered onto the main board and it, it also looked a little bit burnt in fact you, around it on the main board you can see little traces little burn marks okay this is I unsoldered PS202 which is qualified as N 25J, alright, I know it's a bit hard to see, but that's what it is, it's a, uh, most, more than likely of the brand Röhm, or Röhm, R-O-H-M, and uh, I measured it with my multimeter you see over there, so, yeah, that's zero, so now let's measure the fuse, there you go. The fuse is open. Alright, I unsoldered PS201. This one here. Yeah, this little thing. It's qualified as type number N20Q, I think. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, according to the service manual. This one is rated for 800 milliamps. So let's measure it. There you go. So that fuse is still good. Alright, so here's my hypothesis. Um, the reason why, probably, uh, a fuse blew on the main board of the Sony CD player is probably due to two things. Um, first of all, uh, over the years of use, um, the uh, electrolytics started to degrade. Okay, and um, and the fuse that blew up on the 
main board, uh, uh, heated up every time the CD play was switched on, yeah, due to uh, the surge in current uh, being pulled by all of the peripherals, plus the currents uh, pulled by degrading electrolytics, uh, made it such that the amount of current that was pulled through the power supply or from the power supply surged over one amp and therefore the fuse degraded every time because basically a fuse is nothing more than let's say a resistor right so after several years of use the fuse uh, overheated several times and degraded and then on the fatal day that uh, the fuse was at its end of its uh, let's say life cycle um, the CD player was switched on yet again and the fuse just couldn't handle the current draw anymore and just blew up yeah so that is let's say probably or that is that is a probable uh, thing that happened in the past you know and that's probably one of the main reasons why the fuse uh, blew up and the CD player stopped working. Now the other reason might be that the um, the motor of uh, the CD player uh, caddy, yeah, or I should say the motors, yeah, started to draw uh, slightly more current, yeah. And in combination with degrading uh, electrolytic capacitors, uh, drew more than one amp uh, that the fuse could handle, you know. And uh, yeah, why? Because motors uh, over the years they get dirty, and uh, the lubrication is less, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you know, and combined with the current drawn by all the other peripherals, um, it was just simply too much for that one fuse to handle. So, you know, keeping in mind, of course, the uh, planned obsolescence that most uh, uh, manufacturers build into their appliances, I wouldn't be astonished that between those two reasons, um, the fuse in the end uh, just blew up uh, as a safety precaution, of course, and therefore the whole thing just stopped working. As an indication of the state of all the components around the power supply, let me show you this one diode here. Yeah. And, and its uh, general uh, shape. Yeah. You can see the leads of this diode um, completely blackened. All right. So, in my opinion, the leads of this diode uh, overheated, uh, or at the very least became very very hot, all right, and therefore blackened totally, you know, because here's a, a little resistor, yeah, that is next to this diode, and you can see that uh, the resistor has totally clean leads, you know, which the diode hasn't. So, and I pulled several diodes out of the power supply right there and I tested them and they all tested okay 
Yeah, their uh, characteristics are those of a normal silicon diode. Uh, but their leads were all blackened, just like that diode over there. Alright? Now, interestingly, this whole, uh, this whole bunch of, of components on the schematic is qualified as a quote-unquote B-plus switch. So this op-amp here seems to drive this transistor here, uh, which in turn would switch on the B-plus voltage for the whole uh, device, let's say. So the fuse which was located here just blew up. And it was rated for 1 amp. Okay. So, in my opinion, it's not entirely a coincidence that it's close to what is designated as the B-plus switch. All right. And, and the power supply as a whole. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, and continue to do, is to replace all the electrolytics and um, and I'll also clean up the motors uh, of the CD uh, caddy. Alright, so here is one of the diodes I, I extracted from the power supply of the Sony. And uh, if we measure its uh, characteristics with the with the multimeter this is what we get the voltage drop over the diode is uh, around about 580 millivolts which is let's say close to what is typical for a normal silicon diode all right now um, I couldn't find an exact replacement for this type of diode uh, which seems to be some sort of proprietary silicon rectifier diode from Sony uh, but I have the next best thing which is uh, a 1N4007 uh, silicon uh, rectifier diode and in, which in fact is rated for a 1 amp current okay so if we measure its characteristics there you go we get uh, 586 uh, millivolts uh, voltage drop over the diode which is pretty close to what the original diode measured um, the one that I pulled from the power supply this fuse which is rated at 1 amp uh, blew up okay uh, in the or on the PCB of the Sony CD player now this one has a uh, type number N25 J okay now I bought identical or at least I think identical uh, fuses you see here okay Let's see if, you, if I can show you so there I bought these and come on focus 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 here I know it's hard to see, uh, the camera has trouble to focus. Either way, uh, these fuses have the type number N25Y instead of N25J. Now, these are still rated at 1 amp, okay? Whereas the other one. Uh, according to the schematic was rated at 1 amp as well 
In my opinion, the difference is that uh, one is a slow blow and the other is a fast blow. Yeah. Now, I couldn't find any specifications on the internet. I looked for a while, but I just couldn't find any. Uh, so, I'm going to assume that these uh, will uh, do exactly what they need to do. Remember this diode right here, where I'm pointing at. Let's give you a little bit more light. So, this diode right here, uh, remember that we noticed that its leads were seriously blackened, right? So which would have pointed into the direction of overheating actually. So I looked it up on the service manual and this diode has a type number 11 EQS04. Now it seems to be an, uh, an all-round, all-purpose uh, diode, rectifier diode, uh, with uh, relatively speaking uh, low voltage drop. Yeah, and uh, its specifications, uh, its maximum specifications, go between 40 and 100 volts uh, forward voltage and a one amp uh, current draw. Yeah, or one amp current drop over the diode. Well, I shouldn't say drop, but but it can let through one amp. Let's say it like that. So the typical voltage drop of that type of diode seems to be 550 millivolts. Okay, so I unsoldered one of its leads which happens to be the cathode, and um, let's measure it on my uh, multimeter, right? So, and there you go. The uh, forward voltage drop uh, on the diode is 212 millivolts, okay? So, which is way too low. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it by an all-purpose 1N4007, which is uh, current-wise in the same range as the 11 EQS04, uh, but it can withstand up to 1 kilovolt. Um, however, the typical voltage drop over this diode is 580 millivolts, which is way much closer to what the uh, 11 EQS04 is specified uh, to have as a voltage drop, a typical voltage drop. So yeah, I'm going to replace the this diode right here. Uh, let me show you. So I'm going to replace this diode here, which is uh, which has the number D three four one. Yeah, I'm going to replace it by an all-purpose one and four thousand seven. All right. So here is the result of the refurbishment campaign of the Sony's main board. So there are 22 electrolytics, two paper caps, six diodes, and one fuse that I replaced. Okay, maybe I will have to replace more parts, but up to now this is what I replaced. So all the components are now checked and those that I wanted to replace are now replaced on the main board. Uh, what I'm going to do next is clean the CD playing mechanism here 
uh, and D uh, front panel of the CD player all right so with the display and all the uh, switches all right so I'm going to unmount that and clean uh, let's say the, the the upper side of the PCB uh, just to make sure the, the switches are all clean and there are no electrolytics left to replace and once the display board and the uh, CD player itself so the, the, the reader mechanism of the CD player are cleaned and greased and all that uh, then we're going to reconnect the three parts of the CD player but not inside the case just out in the open air like this and then we're going to try it out and see it's if it switches on and if it does if it still plays normally all right to to clean the CD player we need to disassemble it a little bit and um, one of the things we need to disassemble is the tray all right so the tray needs to be taken off and to do that it's uh, quite simple by taking off this bracket first so you pinch two plastic hooks together at this side and you lift it up a little bit and you do the same at the other side there you go so that's one part <coughs> now you lift off the tray itself okay and the tray actually glides on these uh, ribs here that rest on these little protrusions right here these little tabs here all right um, it turns out to be <clears throat> relatively simple to do you simply pivot the uh, PCB after unscrewing it of course you simply pivot it forward and then you lift it out like this and uh, and that's it and there are all the buttons inside all right so it's not too difficult to do so what I'm going to do next is um, uh, clean the whole front panel uh, front back and then uh, also what I'm going to do is replace one electrolytic on the uh, display board this one here all right I hooked everything up you know the uh, main board I hooked it up to the display yeah? and I hooked it up to the uh, CD player mechanism so uh, we're going to try a first power up <coughs> uh, I haven't tested it out yet so you and I together will discover whether all my work that I did to uh, repair this will have paid off so it's hooked up to the AC power so the only two things I need to do is uh, 
switch on the AC and then press the power button and then well then we'll see whether the whole thing will go poof or whether it will work so what do you think will it work or won't it well there's only one way to know it uh, let's see all right mains power is on so all I need to do now is press the power button right so this little button here should I or shouldn't I okay let's do it um, on the count of three one two Okay, I didn't see it go poof. Mm, it's asking for a disk. Yeah, it says no disk. Um, by the way, the mechanism switched on. Okay. There you go. So. was this reacted for a moment when I switched it on and nothing went poof so the main board looks to be okay and the display looks to be okay uh, mind you this is still not connected to an amplifier so right now we can't test whether the sound would work correctly but we can test uh, the loading mechanism for example so let me press on the open close button let's see if that will react oh yes it does <laughs> okay let's close it again Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, now, obviously, it's looking for a disc, and it says no disc. Okay. So, <clears throat> that looks to be nice. Um, what I propose to do is... Um, uh, switch it off and mount it back to the bottom uh, plate of the uh, cabinet. All right, I mounted back all the main parts of the CD player, so the CD playing mechanism, as it were, the reader, you could say, the main board. And the front panel. So <clears throat> here's a, a close up of all the parts. All right. So all I need to do now is to reconnect the the front panel and the CD player itself. Well, the the, the reader, let's say. Uh, to the main board and in, in effect uh, how you do that is by sliding in uh, these flat connectors like this gently there you go by gently grabbing it at both sides and sliding it into the connector all right and make sure that you push it all the way in uh, there's no need for huge force by the way so let me do the same thing for the reader I don't really 
really like these flat connectors, but you know, they're, in my opinion, not a very dependable technology, but it's cheap. So there you go. Reconnected and remounted all of it. Alright, let's test the CD player with a CD and see if it plays the CD correctly. Alright, so uh, it's hooked up to my amplifier, the uh, Gründig R400 that I restored recently. And it plays through my uh, lower speakers. You see up there, you know, there are two lower speakers. Okay, so why don't we give it a, a go and, and see if it works? All right, obviously, I'm not going to play each song uh, to its full length. You know, I don't want to get a copyright strike. Anyway, let's load the CD. Um, here we go. All right, it says seven tracks, 40 minutes, uh, 40 minutes, 42 seconds, play time, play. So yeah, it, it plays all the songs normally, okay? Um, the interface of this CD player uh, <coughs> takes a bit of getting used to. Um, for example, if it reads in the CD, yeah, uh, after, if you're not quick enough to play the play button, the number of tracks and uh, the time, the total play time on the CD-ROM, uh, on the CD in fact, uh, disappears. Um, I don't know if that's normal or not, but, but it does work. So yeah. It, it plays um, normally. Um, I haven't tried the shuffle function yet, uh, but uh, what I do know is that these buttons uh, work. So you can jump to any track you like by pressing the track number button. So we know there are seven tracks they always start from one. So say I want to hear track four, I press the button number four. So yeah, um, <coughs> it does seem to work correctly. 
exactly. Um, so what I'm going to do next, of course, is um, I'm going to clean up the outer shell of the cabinet because there are some scratches and everything. So I'm, I'm probably going to give it a a layer of matte black finish uh, on the outside. Uh, then I need to close it up, of course. And uh, and yeah, there you go. Um, and then we can have a final look at it playing. All right. So somebody used some tool, I would guess a screwdriver or something, to um, open up the case, in fact. Um, although why they would have done that, I don't know. Um, and therefore the side, one side of the CD player's uh, cabinet is damaged. And before I'm going to give it a new layer of paint, uh, I need to repair those damages. Um, and you can tell these scratches were probably made during transport. Okay. Also, <coughs> there are some blemishes on top. Uh, you can tell where some sort of equipment stood on top of the CD player, right? So, yeah, all in all, the I would say the right side of the CD player was uh, damaged, and I need to repair it.
okay, I degreased it. So I, I, I finished hammering out most of the damage on the case. Um, this corner succeeded rather well. The, the dent that was on the front corner here is practically gone. When I feel with my finger over it, I can feel a slight, slight dent. But it's compared to what it was, this is nothing. So I'm going to leave it as it is. This is okay. Um, this, on the other hand, well, on this corner, <clears throat> the damage was much more extensive. Uh, and I tried my best to hammer it and, and press it back into shape. And under a certain angle, you can still see some of the damage that was there. Uh, but for this corner, which was seriously damaged, I think this is going to be as good as it gets. I don't think I can improve very much on it. So, I'm not going to keep hammering at it. Uh, I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, and um, <coughs> it, so the, the damaged corner and all the rest of the case, I gave a good cleaning with degreaser and this is what came off. All right. So there was quite a bit of dirt uh, on the entire case. So I rinsed it with some fresh water, tap water, and uh, wiped it off. And now I'm going to let it dry for 10 minutes or so. And then we can start painting. I'm going to use acrylic matte black paint. All right, and I think two layers will be enough. So here we go. Okay. 
So yeah, there you go. Let's put on the CD. And let's jump right away to the fourth song. Yeah, I know. It's it's a pity I can't play the whole song. I wish I could uh, let you listen to the whole song, but unfortunately, I can't. Uh, yeah, but let's see if I can risk a few playing a few seconds and then hop a little bit further and playing another few seconds. Okay, so. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we have something special down here for the land of the city. Final look 
at uh, CD player as it works or as it plays. Well, there you go. Um, I mounted up the cabinet cover. Okay, this is the left side. Uh, this was the the damaged right side. Uh, let's give you some more light. So this is or was the damaged right side, and this is how it looks like right now. Okay. And then the top of the player. I'll show you that too. show you the back if you want. Uh, let's show you the back as well. There you go. Alright, there's not much to it. There is a, a digital out uh, audio uh, bus. Uh, I can't use it. I don't have an amplifier to connect it up to this. Uh, I have the output, the audio output, well I should say the analog output connected to my amplifier. And that's about it. There, there isn't more to it than that. The serial number by the way is 506-5659. Yeah, I know I, I may sound a bit weird, but I had a, a pretty bad cold uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, it affected my uh, my vocal cords a little bit. So anyway, so that's the back of the CD player. Let's move back to the front for a final look. at the CD player, the CDP M42. For some reason I never seem to get it right. I always say the M24. Uh, I, I don't know why, but I mean it's the M42, okay. CDP M42. Alright, so there you go. Um, Let's listen to, <coughs> let's listen a final time to the first uh, five or six seconds of one of my favorite songs.
So enjoy the summer and thanks for watching.